Newsom says he's in. I would just point out, though, something. We often talk about the mistakes that Newsom has made. So I, I pulled up. There's a supercut. There are so many things that he's done in California that even he says are a disaster and totally in defensible let's let's play the uh, newsom supercut of he takes full responsibility we had an historic number of homeless under no. republican administration right now there's 171,000 escalated okay disgraceful and, and all right i'll compare to florida again oh, yeah. 26,000 of course okay same not weather similar state i mean uh, i've lived in very, both dynamics are very different that said we own this sean i'm not i'm no. not here defending no, this okay. but here's the difference but you're going to build 1200 homes this year i read that's not true you have a proposal. I just got 68,000 people off the streets last year. And by the way, that's been politifact. 68,000. We had, a, we had, I have a $15.3 billion homeless plan. When I got here, it was half a billion dollars. The state of California was not involved in the homeless issue. We got involved. We're holding cities and counties accountable. I'm suing cities that are not producing housing. housing. We actually have a 15-year high in new housing starts in the state of California. We're actually seeing programs produce real results. But I want accountability. I'm not the mayor of California. I'm governor of six states larger than 21 states populations combined. And the difference between me and most politicians is I own this. He owns it, Clay. He owns the massive screw ups that California is going through. Is that really an answer? Like, I, I own it. OK, I guess we can't talk about it anymore. I'm going to be honest with you, Buck. I watched Gavin Newsom's interview with Sean Hannity. I disagree with everything just about that he has done. I didn't hate him. I, I, this is why I am concerned that he is potentially going to be the nominee. And I know you Come laugh on. at me, and I know you Come ridicule on. it. And I, I, I want to, I want to really despise evil Keanu Reeves, right? Which I think is a perfect Thank description Thank of you. how he sounds. That. But I give him credit, just like we did for Trump for going on CNN. I give him credit for going into the lion's den with Deshaun Hannity. And, Buck, I think there are a lot of people out there that when you say, and, and actually there's a longer version of, of, of Hannity kind of grilling him on the stupid French laundry thing, of him saying, yeah, it was stupid, I'm an idiot, you know, basically I'm paraphrasing what he said. And we have this world that we've created, Buck, and I, I do think those clips, when you play them, we have created a world where ever acknowledging that you got anything wrong if you are a politician is considered to be such a sign of weakness that even when people get things wrong, they will not admit it. And I think, I really do, for people out there who are listening, people will accept if you say, you know what, I make a lot of decisions every day, and sometimes I screw up. That's normal life, and we've created this artificial world where, I mean, if you ask Trump, for instance, I think, hey, what's something that you really screwed up as president? He would say nothing, right? Uh, and, and obviously that's not true, right? Because you make 100 decisions every day and some of them you're going to get wrong. I think Newsom, Buck, may be able to just say, yeah, I've screwed up a lot of things, but I've learned from them and I'm the best candidate going forward. And I think he may be rhetorically skilled enough he may be rhetorically skilled enough that even as elegant as he is, even as greasy as his hair looks, even as evil Keanu Reeves as he looks like and sounds like, I think he may play well. And I think he's setting it up to be the replacement for Biden because there's no other reason, Buck, he would be doing a sit-down interview with Sean Hannity. All right. So let me, let me a, a few things that come to mind for me. Um, and there are places where I... I I'm, I'm aligned with, with your assessment, and there are places where it's not uh, that I think you disagree with me, but I had a, sort of a different takeaway, right? So um, on the why do I think it's so interesting that he goes, I, I said responsibility. I own that. I own that. He kept saying it. What Gavin Newsom is saying, and I think that our audience needs to hear this because we talk about it a lot, is when we talk about the outflow from California, when we talk about the homelessness crisis, when we talk about all the crime, when we talk about the duplicitousness of the elites, it wasn't just Newsom, remember, it was Pelosi getting her hair done, it was uh, um, London Mayor Breed London going Breed. partying, I mean, right, right. across the board. Everything that we told you uh, and, and tell you about that is true. Gavin Newsom, it is indefensible. He can't even defend it. So I just, my first thing was, hey, you know, people say, oh, they're just beating up on California because it's blue state and it's the devil. No, 
What we're saying is the absolute gospel truth of what a screw up these different parts of an otherwise. And the thing is, I agree with you on this. When he talks about how much he loves California, what do you and I sit here and say? I, I, Calif- I grew up in New York City. And I always thought, I'm going to get older one day, man. I'm just going to live in Santa Monica. I'm going to live in Mount. Like, that's the promised land, California. Everyone's so happy and beautiful and the sunshine and Hollywood. I grew up, you know, idolizing it. And he kept saying, I love this state. I love this state. Yeah, but he's destroying it. And the one thing that he kept pointing to was, oh, our GDP and we create so much. He inherited Silicon Valley and the entertainment industry located in his state if you took silicon valley out of california the gdp per, of that state would look very different and that's just something that he happened to have he inherited okay on the how does he play part of this you know he's slick i mean i'm not going to say the guy's not slick and i didn't and i appreciate that sean took the perspective too. look let's actually talk policy it was it was amazing you saw two people who disagree who sat down and actually had a conversation when was a lot? Now, we gave Trump a lot of credit for going on CNN. What's interesting in that context is CNN's not going to let that happen again because Trump, you know, just did a flying elbow off the top belt buckle to that network. And they thought it was going to be something where they, you know, they'd be able to pin him to the mat. Um, but we need more of this. Uh, for me, though, I mean, you're looking at it, you know, is Newsom for Newsom's 100 percent going to run for president? Right. I think you and I agree on that at some point. I don't think I don't think it's going to be this time around. I don't think there's any I don't think there's a pathway for him, but he's definitely going to run for president. We may get a Newsom DeSantis throwdown in 2028, right? That could happen. But in the meantime, the whole red state blue state paradigm that we've talked about so many times on the show, Gavin Newsom, he doesn't agree with everything we're saying about it, but he admits the problems that we say are huge problems are real, they are indefensible and they need to fix this stuff. Here's what I would say to everybody. The Republican bench of candidates is really good, right? There's four or five people that if they were the nominee right now, I would be like, I feel good about their chances to beat Joe Biden. What about the Democrat bench? I think Gavin Newsom is by far the best Democrat that is available, right? They talk about Pritzker, you know, the fat governor from Illinois who's wrong on everything and not very likable. He has zero chance to be president. I think Kamala Harris is so bad at being a politician and so inauthentic and so fake that she has a 0% chance of being a politician. Who do you look at in the Democrat ranks and think, oh, I could see that person one day elevating themselves and becoming president of the United States? I'm telling you, I watched, uh, I watched Gavin Newsom And he is the best candidate that Democrats have. Now, I think part of this buck is we live in a world where results don't matter. And this is scary because he's wrong on everything, right? It's all what you can sell. And if they can sell flipping Fetterman and if they can sell Biden, Gavin Newsom is a far better product for them to sell than John Fetterman or Joe Biden. He's way better than Bernie Sanders, way better than Elizabeth Warren, way better than Hillary Clinton. Obama was a great product, right? They wrapped him up. They sold him. I think Gavin Newsom on a debate stage and on the campaign trail, as inauthentic and wrong as I think he is is on virtually everything, I think he would sell well. I really do. And I think he is the person right now. If you had to make me point to somebody, like let's say Joe Biden— is not able to, uh, to to run or they somehow knock him out Nancy Kerrigan style, kneecap him, um, I think that it would be Newsom who finds his way in. I just don't, I don't understand what the, unless you're going to pull some convention, uh, you know, cloak, uh, you know, back cloak room, smoky committee meeting of the Democrat powers that be. I just don't know how you could replace uh you know, Kamala Harris on the ticket without just completely. Anyway, let, let's not. That's all stuff is, you know, that's right now we're not there. Biden's a nominee. I think they would have um, to have a full on run, which is why I say if Biden's not going to run, it has to happen at some point this summer so they can allow the primary process to play itself out. Right. Unless it's just going to be the vice president, which would be, you know, she's she she's, she would president. get smoked. And I don't think that they're going to be willing to go I, and get smoked. 
I feel like you're forcing me to be the guy who says, I think you're underestimating Kamala Harris, which is which is <laughs> not, not an I argument want you want to be making. That's not but... where I want to be in this whole thing. But I, I if the Fetterman effect, if they if Fetterman can win a Senate seat in Pennsylvania, I don't know why with the Democrat machinery in place, Kamala Harris doesn't become uh, I mean, Joe Biden was a Joe candidate until the Democrat machinery decided, you know, he's winning. He's he, he we're, he's going to be the guy. He was trailing in the primary. We all know it. And they just flipped a switch and he's the guy. I think they could flip that switch for Kamala, too. That's how I see it.